Due to popular demand, I have purchased an AMD Ryzen 5 9500F processor to see if this is something you should consider for your next upgrade. There's actually been a surprising amount of hype around this part, especially given that at least for now, you can only purchase it in the Chinese market. Though, as we've seen previously with parts like the 7500F, that will likely change in the near future. And I suppose when that happens, it would be nice to know what it has to offer. But before we get to that, this portion of the video has been sponsored by the Gigabyte MO27Q28G, an excellent 1440p gaming monitor using a brand new primary RGB tandem OLED panel. The MO27Q28G offers next level brightness and stunning HDR performance, topping the charts for OLED brightness in our HDR tests. It has rich black levels even in bright 500 lux environments thanks to its 99% anti-reflection coating, and with a fast 280Hz refresh rate it's suited to all gaming needs. Gigabyte complement this package with all the latest features, including a KVM switch, OLED VRR anti-flicker, and a sleek metal stand that takes up less of your valuable desk space. We highly recommend the Gigabyte MO27 Q28G OLED gaming monitor. It's great value. So to learn more, check the links in the description below. Okay, so firstly, what is the Ryzen 5 9500F? Put simply, it is a cut down version of the 9600X, but with the integrated graphics removed. So really, it is to the 9600X what the 7500F is to the 7600X. The base clock has been reduced from 3.9 GHz to 3.8 GHz, that's a mere 2.5% reduction, while the boost clock has dropped from 5.4 GHz to 5 GHz, so that's a 7% reduction. Along with those clock speed adjustments, the integrated RDNA 2 GPU with two CUs has been removed. However, whereas the 9600X doesn't include a box cooler, the 9500F should, though if you buy yours from AliExpress like I did, you probably won't get the box cooler. Everything else though, remains the same. So the 9500F is still a 65 watt part, it features a single CCD with 6 cores and 12 threads, the full 32 megabyte L3 cache and 28 PCI Express 5.0 lanes, four of which are reserved as a link to the chipset. As it currently stands, the 9600X can be purchased in the US for $200, while over here in Australia, it's more like $370. The 9500F should be considered cheaper than that, but at least for now, while availability is still quite limited, you're looking at around a 12% discount, for example, I paid $325 Australian, delivered to my door. And granted, it shouldn't be more than around 7% slower, so a 12% discount is decent, but you're also missing out on the iGPU, which can come in handy from time to time. Anyway, let's first work out how the 9500F performs, and for this I'll be using our standard AM5 test system, which features the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master with DDR5 6000 CL30 memory. And for comparison, we have a range of 6-core, 12-thread AM5 processors, as I recently updated all of this data, and I will be adding some competing Intel parts to the mix soon for some future content. Okay, so first, here is how the Ryzen 5 9600X behaves during the Cinebench multi-core workload. We're looking at an average all-core frequency of 5 GHz, and when using the Arctic Freeze 36, the CPU temperature peaked to just 74 degrees, at a package power of 88 watts. Then when running the single core test, we saw a maximum CPU frequency of 5.45 GHz. Now under the same conditions, the 9500F maintained an average core clock frequency of 4.75 GHz, making the 9600X just 5% faster in this test. The peak core temperature also dropped by 4 degrees to 70, and the package power from 88 watts to an average of 86 watts. Finally, when running the single core test, the 9500F clocked up to 5.05 GHz, making the 9600X 8% faster for this workload. Okay, time for some gaming benchmarks, though please note I won't go over every single game tested as the data does get very repetitive. So starting with Baldur's Gate 3, we see that the 9500F is 7% slower than the 9600X when testing with the medium preset and then 4% using Ultra. This meant the performance was very similar to the 7600X and 6-7% better than the 7500F. Next we have Cyberpunk 2077 and this isn't a great title for Zen 5 as Zen 4 parts tend to perform a little bit better. As a result the 9500F was only able to match the 7400F coming in slightly slower than the 7500F. It was also 7% slower than the 9600X using the medium preset and 5% when using the ray tracing ultra preset. 
Moving on to Counter-Strike 2, here the 9500F looks quite good, delivering 8% greater performance than the 7600X when using the medium preset, and then matching it with Ultra. This also meant it was 7% slower than the 9600X, which is about what we'd expect to find in this sort of game. The Marvel Rivals performance is interesting. The 9500F is only able to match the 7600 in this game, with 173 FPS on average using the medium preset, and that made it 8% slower than the 9600X. But when we switch to the more GPU limited ultra settings, the 9500F ends up being just a few frames slower than the 9600X, and just ahead of the 7600X. The 9500F's performance in Rainbow Six Siege is very solid, especially when using the medium preset. Here it allowed for an average of 469 FPS, making it 16% faster than the 7500F, and 10% faster than the 7600X. Meanwhile, it was just 6% slower than the 9600X, so a great result there. And then even when we switch to the Ultra preset, it still ends up being 6% slower than the 9600X, but even so it did end up beating the 7600X to come in 10% faster than the 7500F. The second last game we're going to look at is Space Marine 2, and here the 9500F was just 4% slower than the 9600X, or 2% slower, when using the Ultra settings. And this placed it roughly on par with the 7600X, so I'd say a good result overall. Last up we have ACC, and here the 9500F performed exceptionally well, coming in just 2% slower than the 9600X when using the medium preset, and that meant it was 14% faster than the 7500F. That margin was slightly extended using the Epic preset out to 16%, so the 9500F is a good bit faster than the 7500F in this title. Now when it comes to shader compilation performance, the 9500F is 5% slower than the 9600X, taking 332 seconds to complete the workload. This placed it roughly on par with the Ryzen 5 7600X, and a mere 2% faster than the 7500F. We saw a similar thing when measuring shader compilation time in Stalker 2, here the 9500F was 5% slower than the 9600X, again matching the performance of the 7600. And then we see that shader compilation performance of the 9500F was also 5% slower than that of the 9600X in The Last of Us Part 1, taking almost 17 minutes to complete the task, basically the same time it took the 7600. So wrapping up this testing, the 9500F was on average across the 12 games tested 5% slower than the 9600X using the medium settings, and around 3% slower with the ultra settings, which is really exactly what we'd expect to find, given that the 9500F clocks anywhere from 5 to 7% lower. This meant that the 9500F was on average just 5% faster than the 7500F, which again is in line with other Zen 5 versus Zen 4 comparisons. Now, as I noted earlier, unfortunately, at current pricing from AliExpress, the 9500F ends up being just $45 cheaper than locally sourced 9600X processors, so it's really not worth buying at this point in time, as a mere $45 Australian saving isn't worth essentially forgoing a warranty, as I have to imagine getting a replacement part via AliExpress would be a bit difficult, especially if it dies, say, six months after you got it. Not only that, but in terms of cost per frame, it's a mere 8 to 9% saving when compared to the 9600X, but also 55% more expensive than the 7500F which can be purchased and delivered from AliExpress for just $200 Australian, and I think that's the kind of saving where buying from an overseas retailer does make sense. So there you have it, the 9500F. It doesn't appear to have any hidden gems or traps for us. It is very much as expected, and that being a slightly downclocked 9600X, without the iGPU of course, and that resulted in the expected performance, power consumption, and thermals. Still, I suppose it is good to better confirm all of that and see that AMD hasn't downgraded anything like, say, the thermal interface material, like what they did with the 7400F and 8400F. The problem right now is that the 9500F isn't at all appealing, given the current pricing. Here in Australia, for similar money, you'd be much better off just buying a locally sourced 9600X, or if you're looking to save a little bit of money, the 7600 is currently pretty well priced. The 7600 and 9500F might deliver a similar cost per frame, but in reality, the 7600 is a much better deal right now, as you also get the box cooler and that local warranty. The 9500F, on the other hand, at present, can only be purchased via AliExpress, and when doing so, you don't get the box cooler or a local warranty. Not only that, but if you are going to buy a CPU from AliExpress, 
the 7500F is the one to get, as it is a considerably better deal given that you can land one for $200 Australian. At that price, it's a complete steal. So, until you can buy the 9500F for, or very near $200 Australian, it doesn't really make sense to pick it up. But if it does hit that price point, it will be the new value option for AM5 users. Though, just don't get too excited, overall it's only a very minor upgrade from the 7500F. As for Intel, you can purchase the Core i5-12400F from AliExpress for $190 Australian dollars or just $200 locally, so that might be an interesting comparison. See how the 12400F and 7500F compare, and if that's content you're interested in seeing, then yeah, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll do my best to make sure that happens. But for now, this is our look at the 9500F. Really a gaming-focused look at this CPU, because that's mostly what we're interested in, so let me know what you think about this part. Is it something you'll be considering for a future upgrade? And also don't forget, we have the join button on Patreon. If you want more Harbour Unbox goodness, you can get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested. If not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.